Bishop, thank you again for allowing me to um, interview you at such short notice. Thank you. It's, it's my pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Um, so, happy birthday again. Uh, we know that you turned 60 this year, and I know many people are wondering, how do you do it? How do you sit, stay so fit and healthy and look so young? Well, I think first and foremost, uh, I give the glory to God. Uh, God determines people's genes and other things, and um, the other place that we determine are the things that we put into our lives. And I think, having been a sports person before, I've maintained that side of my life. And I also believe that health is um, an inside-out job. What you put in is what manifests on the outside. And I've endeavored to walk in, in happiness, no bitterness, mm -hmm. uh, minimize stress, and I guess I'm just plain fortunate. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah. But um, you're a very voracious reader, and um, you have an amazing ability to memorize and recite scriptures. Really? As well, yes. Okay. As well as memorize people's names from various countries around the world. And how do you do that? Because I'm sure we can all do with that kind of memory from day to day. So how do you? Um, I think I think there are two components. There's a divine component and there's a human component. Mm -hmm. Divine in the sense that I feel God gave me a gift, uh, a gift to be able to to read and retain information. Mm -hmm. And from when I started reading as a child, I, I found out that I could retain a lot of information. And I tried my best never to let go of that gift that God gave to me. So I hone it all the time. And even now that I'm uh, tremendously busy, I still maintain a very hectic reading schedule. Mm -hmm. I read, I every morning I read, I write, I do those things. Now when it comes to memorizing scripture, I don't intentionally go out of my way to memorize scripture. I, they don't know me that I, I'm a voracious reader of scripture. I read and I read and read and somehow it sticks. Mm -hmm. And it just comes up so out of my spirit mm -hmm. re through repetition over and over and over and that is what has happened. And when it comes to the, 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 the recognizing who I face a name, mm -hmm. I don't know how it happens, but I think it's a desire. I like to do that. I like to remember people's names. I like to call people by their name because when somebody hears a person like me call them by name, it's music to their ears that they matter. I don't mm -hmm. look at people as numbers or figures. I look at people as individuals. So I try my best to do that. And I think it's something that I've retained till now and I intend to. Yes. Yeah. And um, one thing for young people, there'll be another question for them, but for us, we've been told and we know that it's important for us to maintain focus and live lives according to um, our purpose or whenever we discover that, but then at the same time, enjoy. But how do you uh, suggest we do that, balance all of those things, we may not be sure of our purpose? Well, you, you, you've, you've answered a little bit of mm -hmm. your question with your question, mm -hmm. and that is balance. People must learn to find balance. I think in today's generation, there's a frantic effort to, to make it quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, I see there's so much pressure on today's generation, and so sometimes the young ones are not being allowed to be young. Mm -hmm. And I tell people that young ones are not miniature adults. They are children. They are young. They are, they, they are youth. And so sometimes we must allow them to dream their own dreams, make their own mistakes, but guide them. And sometimes we need to play a hands-off approach and not pontificate in every department and area of their lives. And sometimes even as parents and as the older ones, we try to live our lives through, through the young ones and force them to become what we could never be. It's okay to, to, to guide the young ones. It's okay to give advice. It's okay to uh, be a shoulder that they can rely on. But sometimes we need to back off and allow them to, to find their own way in life. Mm -hmm. You know, to find the fact that you are, you, are, you are an engineer doesn't mean your child must also be an engineer. The fact that you're a musician. I mean, there are things that run through the blood system, that run through genes and that kind of thing. But sometimes we need to back off. And to the youth, you know, dream your own dreams, focus, make the best use of your time. And, um, uh, and when, when you find your purpose, when you think you have discovered your purpose, stick with it mm -hmm. and, and refuse to be distracted. Mm -hmm. And um, do you have any other words for the youth, just in general? What would your message be to the youth of today? From I want to look community? into the camera and talk to a young person listening to me today. Somebody asked me the other day that, Pastor, you talk a lot about the future. Why is the future so important? And I said, for only one reason. You are going to live there. So let me suggest to you that your future is with you right now. Your future is not ahead of you. Your future is on the inside of you. 
and the building blocks and the things, the decisions and the choices that you make today will inform what you become tomorrow. You have youth on your side. You have a little bit of time on your side. But it's going to dawn on you like it dawned on me lately. That's all too soon. You've turned 60. Moses, the man of God, in his last prayer in Psalm 90 said, Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Listen, in this life, let me give you some quick things starting with an F. Never forget your family. Never forget your faith. Be very careful about your finances. Be very careful about your friends. These are very, very important attributes in your life. A lot of people have died because of friends. A lot of people never made it because of wrong friends. You don't need 1,000 friends. You know, I know on Facebook you want 5,000, 10,000. You want to see how many likes. You're going to find out that the people who say like on Facebook will not even like you. And so I want you to focus on your life assignment and understand that you don't have all the time in the world. One day youth is going to desert you. One day all your beauty, your strength, your everything is going to desert you. And what will be left is the wisdom that you acquired along the way. I believe in you. God believes in you. You are our hope, our inspiration, and our future. You dare not disappoint us. And so rise big, dream big, start small, and go for it. Thank Amen. you so much. Thank you so much, sir. After 35 years of an amazing, amazing and dynamic ministry, what drives you on every day? What keeps you going? What, what keeps me going is I feel that there is more on the inside of me that I can give to this world. Um, I, I might be 60, but I, sometimes I think like a 30 year old mm -hmm. that I, I, I have so much that I can offer the world. That I have so much that I must offer the world. I have so much that I can do in this lifetime, whatever years that God permits me to have before He calls me home. I, I feel that I have so much to give. Um, I'm not thinking about retirement. I'm not thinking mm -hmm. about sitting somewhere and, 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 just, and just becoming a fossil. No. Um, I have I've tried my very best to stay at the cutting edge of what is happening. I don't want to be like a relic. I don't want to be like somebody who is, who is out of touch. That is why I interact a lot with the youth. I learn their language. I learn a whole lot of their things because I feel that I have so much to give to the, to the next generation. Mm -hmm. That is one of my driving motivations. Mm -hmm. And um, what are your thoughts on the current state of the church? So this is two parts. So your thoughts on the current state of the church and your expectations for the church, the body of Christ as a whole, not just Living Springs. Who am I to have thoughts about the church of Jesus Christ? As a leader. Um, as a leader, I, I hear a lot of negativity about the church. And made even more, um, more even made even louder by social media. Mm -hmm. A whole lot of things are being said um, about pastors, about church, and about other things. But none of these things face me at all. Um, Jesus Christ made an announcement many years ago. He said that I built my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. All through, from the birth of the church in the book of Acts, until the curtain closes when the, the Lord Jesus Christ comes to take us, mm -hmm. um, the church has gone through tremendous pressure and attack from, from, from all kinds of empires. The Roman Empire, Nero tried to exterminate them. Uh, all kinds of people have risen up against the church, but the church somehow keeps going. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know that nothing can break the church of Jesus Christ. I still believe in the church. I still believe in leadership. I still believe in the fact that this, the, the greatest hope for the world has been and will always be the church of Jesus Christ. Are we perfect? No, but we serve a perfect master. Are we perfect? No, but the gift in us is perfect. Are we perfect? No, but we, 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 we try to do things that will please God and to help humanity. And right now the, scrut the scrutiny is bigger because of television, because of social media, because of everything. But at the end of the day, one person that makes a mistake does not speak for all of us. The one person that falls does not speak for all of us. For every one person that does wrong, there are millions that do right. Mm -hmm. But human beings are wired 74% to retain negativity rather than positivity. And so I still believe in the church of the Lord. I, I still believe that God has a way of reaching the world regardless of whatever people think. And um, the future, I think the church will still be at the cutting. The church will still be relevant. Mm -hmm. We may not do church like maybe we used to do in my time, in my age. Mm -hmm. Today, because of social media, because of people's short attention span, because of people don't have too much time, I think the dynamics of doing church is going to change a little bit. Um, now people are going to use a lot of technology. People are more visual and all of these things. But at the end of the day, I still believe that the, the name of the Lord will still be glorified. Yes, amen. And finally, um, how would you like to be remembered? So your legacy, what would you like your legacy to be? 
And the last question is, if you had to do it all over again, would you do anything differently? Wow. How would I want to be remembered? I want people to remember me as a man who came into this world and gave people hope. Somebody who overlooked people's faults and mistakes because I'm also a man of many faults. I want to be remembered as a person who loved my God, loved my wife, loved my children, loved the people that God brought my way. I want to be remembered as a man who lived on this earth and made people smile. I want to be remembered as a man who walked in genuineness of heart with ill will towards nobody. I want to be remembered as a person whose voice people look, look forward to listen to give them hope in this life. That is what I would want to be remembered for. If I had it, if I had to do it all over again, I'll still do this thing again. Same way. Uh, maybe a little bit wiser. <laughs> a little bit wiser. Mm -hmm. Spend more time for myself mm -hmm. um, than I've done. But by and large, ninety percent I'll do the same way. Well, Bishop, thank you again for giving us your time and an insight into your incredible life story and ministry so far. And I just pray that God will continue to bless and increase you. Thank you once again. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And I hope we shall have this interview again when I turn 70. Yes, sir. Thank you.